What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to YGOPD, your Yu-Gi-Oh! professional development, and I am excited to announce we just hit 1K. That's amazing. Thank you all so much. This means a ton. This is not possible without you. Next week's video, I have a 1K special planned along with some changes in potentially equipment, um, as well as some really cool things along with a new series that'll be launching. So I'm really excited to bring all of that to you. Just wanted to go ahead and give that a heads up and just go ahead and say thank you right now for all of your support. It's really meant a lot. I've been okay and happy with all of this slow growth and having a really amazing community to back me here this has been a really really cool thing so in honor of that i wanted to give a retrain to something i brought to the channel a few months ago this is kashtira sword soul i've been really thankful to be one of the pioneers on this if you've seen that build featured on mcall 40s channel that was actually my build that got the top eight at a local case tournament of mine a couple months ago i've had the chance to test with it go back change some ratios adjust it a little bit with how the formats evolved and i wanted to share an updated build and really bring sword soul to the forefront of your attention there's so much that's going to happen along with Syac when it gets released in about a month and sword soul is going to be one of those decks that's going to go absolutely crazy post that uh, new set with some new support so before i hop into it i want to shout out all of our new public subs of the channel dr drake e curry kyle displeased lieutenant gabriel arxis and card valor thank you all so much for joining the channel really means a lot continue to smash continue to help grow the channel hit the like button all that type of engagement really does help me and does help the channel so with all that said we'll go ahead and hop right into the main deck okay i will do this in packages uh starting with the sword soul then moving into the cash tira and then after that talking a bit about um, just some of the non-engine stuff as well. If you're unfamiliar with how Cash Tira Sword Soul works, the main idea is you're usually leading with either Unicorn or Fenrir, getting the search off of that, doing all of your Sword Soul play stuff second, and then wrapping up the combo with doing the Cash Tira stuff third. It adds an extra layer of interruption and does quite a lot to bait out negates like Ash, Imperm, that kind of stuff before you commit to your Sword Soul line, or bait out quite a bit going second in terms of interruptions and board breaking with the Cash Tira again before leading into your Sword Soul. So so we have three Ecclesia, pretty straightforward, nothing to say here. An insane starter gets you pretty much any name you want, aside from the new Sword Soul that came out in Photon Hypernova. It has to be special summoned by a worm. After that, we are on Triple Moye. This is pretty straightforward. I don't think much needs to be said here. This is the most amazing card for the deck. Gets you a search and a draw when you synchro into Qi Zhao and helps break boards through cards like Baxia. Triple Long One. Out of all cards, this is probably one of the best ones you can use for this blend specifically because it allows you to lead into Baron before committing to anything else. Of course, you summon your cash tier first, then do this into making Baron, and then if you still have names and extenders left, you continue to go from there. Um, so there's a lot you can do with it, but really having this as a way to turn off things like Nib or potential other interruptions you don't like um, is really, really good. And you have a lot of leeway to get away with this deck right now. I think we're still at the edge of that point where Nib is not as crazy in the format it's still there a little bit but you can get away with playing a very greedy variant of sword soul like this because of that um, in line with the greediness um, if you've seen my profiles on the channel before you know i've always been a fan of just one taya and most sword soul variants except for maybe virtual world i really don't think you need more than one um, you're doing a lot of searching before you do cards like desires and we're not going crazy on those kinds of things so you can get away with one and again sword soul is not the main star of the show it blends uh, kind of 50 50 with the cash stuff as well and then wrapping it up for the Sword Soul monster names are two of the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul. This card is nuts. Um, if you're not playing this in a cash variant of Sword Soul, you really should be. Um, the fact that you get the interruption off this because you're going to have the field spell up. And this this format right now is super field spell heavy. You have um, rogue decks like Marincess, Trap Tricks, that kind of thing with their field spells. Kashtira obviously have the field spell. There's just so much on the board. You don't need to necessarily control it. But again, it gives you an extra layer of interruption. And then after that, we play two Tenyi Spirit Vashuda. Um, this is all the Tenyis I'm doing. I originally cut this, and then I decided to come back to it. It really does bait out quite a lot. It being an extra seven can help in really niche scenarios. Um, but outside of that, it's really good just, again, for baiting interruptions, another discard, and allows you to really get value off it, especially in a post-nib environment. This deck really tries to focus on a way to play through that too um, but it's an extra discard it's an extra name it guarantees that 90 ish percent chance or so based on the number of worms and sword soul cards that you're always going to have something to reveal for moye 
Uh, in line with that, we do play the triple sword soul emergence, kind of moving on to the spell package of the sword soul side, and then one blackout. There's not really much that needs to be said there. That's pretty straightforward. Um, that's more or less a fairly standard sword soul core. You're just playing a little bit less on the tenies, of course, uh, to make room for some of the cash things here. And then in line with that, I will start off with the cash engine here and get everything lined up. Three planet, um, this is definitely your best searcher in the deck. And I would not really probably play this variant if um, the field spell wasn't a thing to make use of the other Abyss Dragon Sword Soul 2. You could get away with just playing a couple Fenrir, but every deck does that now. <laughs> a lot of decks just try to throw in Fenrir and make it fit. But again, this is just another added piece of interruption as well as a starter to get whatever you want. Most of the time you're leading with Unicorn. Unicorn is probably the best starter for this side of the deck. Um, really gets you your full plays, can do almost whatever you want, really. Arise Heart, Shangri Era with follow-up, depending on how greedy or how safe you want to play it. But Unicorn is insane, baits out interruptions. Uh, double Fenrir wanted at least two in here um, it's really really needed especially if you desires get rid of one um, and just having the extra name really does help if you hard open one to search for follow-up and different things like that and then rounding off the cash monsters is just one rise heart you really only do need one and i highly recommend playing one of this this is the bridge that really helps utilize um, things where they stop you from your sword soul package but you can still use the cash to blend into it this allows you to get to things like baguska or different little toolbox types of pieces so really Really powerful i would still recommend playing it but i wouldn't do uh much more than what you see here three unicorn double fenrir and the rise heart uh, after that for the cash spells very straightforward um, in addition to the field spell of course that i mentioned earlier is just one theosis and one birth that's really all you need you're almost always just resolving these once to get through an initial push to make cards like era or a rise heart um, whatever you're doing there after that a lot of it is just control with unicorn birth fenrir and just keeping board presence in that way um, but that's it for the cash things you don't need big bang you don't need scareclaw cash tira if you want to play those extenders you can um, but this deck because of how it kind of plays and you want to see multiple engines you don't want to see dead cards from each side you want to see things that are as usable as possible in the moment and big bang can be one of those cards where it feels really really bad to draw so i just decided to keep that out and focus more on non-engine and the better cards of each engine uh, for the non-engine starting off with the hand traps here we have triple ash blossom pretty straightforward here one of the best hand traps of the game and also of the format right now uh, with branded still being quite a prevalent deck you really really do need the three uh, does quite a lot after that we play triple imperm again probably the six main hand traps of the format right now nib is kind of fading its way out a little bit but maybe coming back into a bit of a resurgence depending on how people respect it for a given event but that's it for the hand traps triple ash triple imperm imperm is a great tool for going first and going second and then the rest of the non-engine that rounds this deck out at 40 is going to be double tactics double thrust and then one pot of desires um, you could play a second one i just have really bad luck with desires of drawing desires off desires and i really only ever want to resolve it once especially in cash format where some people can still go for diablosis um, you could play a call by instead of this if you want but just having this as the target for thrust helps uh, you want as many of those ways to get advantage as possible and again this deck is focused on if you want to be that greedy to play through nib that's why we're on talent that's why we're on thrust why we're on desires a lot of cards that just get you more cards and guarantee you playing and if not it's going to be a card like tactics that's going to rip a card out of your opponent's hand after they've already wasted a hand trap or two to guarantee they can't play so it gets back to your turn but that's the list a clean 40 cards and then from here i'll go ahead and showcase the extra deck starting with the cash stuff and then moving into the sword soul package okay for the cash tira stuff uh starting off one Zeus, uh, I cut this down to one. You don't really need more than one Zeus here. Um, this is more for people who go through the Diablosis line or the Unicorn thing to kind of rip something. They're gonna target this, and I don't care about that as much. When we play cards like Thrust, they get the talents where you could take a cash name and overlay into a Rise Heart by taking their stuff or you use your own stuff. It's just not as needed when you have other tools. Um, but if you want to play two Zeus in here, you can. But again, that's up to you. Um, we do play two Arise Heart. I think two is absolutely necessary. You want to guarantee be able to get into one. So you always, always have to have that second one. And then after that, just one Shangri Era. Um, I've cut down on the sevens quite a bit, as you can see. Um, I wanted to get a little bit more focus on the Sword Soul side of things. 
Um, but again, if you want to kind of move back towards that, you can. But overall, this is really kind of how the deck functions, is you just want to focus on the main, most powerful sevens you have. The one card I do miss that I will show on screen is Pearly Happiness, um, the, the bigger one. I really like that as kind of a pseudo dark ruler in the deck that is searchable. Yes, it can be responded to, but to turn off things that are like, untargetable or undestructible and then run over like Dragoon might be a little bit necessary as Branded has started to play that a bit more. So after that, the last Ixies we play is one Baguska. I kind of hinted at this. Um, this card I just think is an absolute necessity in this deck in particular and even potentially regular Sword Soul to be able to get a card like Moye and then uh, the Tenny Spirit Shathana out if you're playing a more pure version to overlay into Baguska if you have to. But this really just does give the synergy and blend over into Rise Heart. Um, I've seen a lot of people create cash Sword Soul variants or cash even Rocket and things like that, but they don't have any tools in the extra deck that would allow them, if something bricks and you get locked into one side how you can still use the other side to make something that is passable and that's where baguska comes in being able to pair that with an arise heart is really really powerful the level fours and be able to make baguska and still then get back to your turn and then just pop off from there so that's the XCs. The rest of it is uh, synchros and links as it relates to the Sword Soul package. Starting off with the tens, of course, one Baron, best 10 in the game, one Sinister Sovereign, and then my favorite synchro that's probably been ever printed is one Chengying. I just love this card so much. Being able to banish cards by effect with your um, Kashtira stuff, with the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul, the new one, this card just goes so hard in this deck. Like it does everything. It's so, so good. Um, really just my. My favorite card to go into um, if I didn't need a negate it's always this is the 10 you can play the ice jade but I just don't think that's really needed in this variant especially because you're doing cash um, but if you want to experiment with the ice jade uh, gamir I believe it is I'll show that on screen you can as well uh, after that, going into the eights, two Qi Zhao, necessary, again, similar to um, the Arise Heart and the extra, as you want to guarantee get to be able to resolve one, so that's where that comes in. I've bumped up Baxia to two. Um, this has been come from some prior experience. A lot of cash players will typically, if you're not if you're just on pure sword soul and you only play the one back here they're going to rip it. Um, that's kind of one of the most threatening cards to them to get rid of things on their board. So I wanted to bump that up to guarantee I have one. And then one of the Draco Berserker and one of the Dragite. Dragite is here to compensate for things like Labyrinth or decks that would play Gozen, since that is probably the best floodgate of choice against Cash right now. This still gives you a line with a card like Moye to still synchro, draw, and put a little bit of a disruption on the board. And then after that is the one Monk of the Ten. You could probably sneak away from playing this if you want, but just because the Vishudas are in here and you have some spare slots in your extra, you can make room for it, and it's still really, really decent again to bait out boards bait out negates and then continue playing from there so that's the updated deck profile for the cash tira sword soul list if you've never experimented with this please do it um, if you're bored of just <laughs> playing a rise heart pass and you want something different with your cash engine to do like i have i've had a lot of fun with this it's really really cool it does a lot feels different feels fresh give it a try if you haven't Thank you again for 1K. That's absolutely insane. I have a lot planned next week. New video, new equipment, testing all that kind of stuff. New series, all launches next week. With all that said, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Later.